At the completion of this video, you will know how to clean and assemble a CDC biofilm reactor and accompanying components. You will know how to inoculate, initiate batch, and start continuous flow to grow a mature biofilm in a CDC reactor. This video follows ASTM method E2562-12 and Biosurface Technologies Corporation's Operator's Manual. This is a CDC biofilm reactor from Biosurface Technologies. The reactor components are identified on pages 4 to 8 of the operator's manual that accompanies the reactor. Reactor components are washed with laboratory detergent, rinsed well with tap water, then reagent grade water and allowed to air dry. For glass or other coupon materials that are easily scratched, place coupons in individual 50 milliliter conical vials. Pour 1% laboratory detergent solution into the vials so that the coupons are covered. Transfer the vials to a rack in a degassed sonicator bath. Ensure the liquid level in the vials are even with the liquid level in the bath. Sonicate the coupons for 5 minutes. Rinse the coupons thoroughly with reagent grade water until no detergent bubbles remain and sonicate again for 5 minutes. Pour the water from the vials. Spread the coupons out on absorbent paper and air dry. For other coupon materials, polycarbonate for example, place all coupons in a beaker with 1% laboratory detergent solution. Sonicate, rinse and dry as described earlier. Handle clean coupons with gloved hands to prevent oils and other residues from soiling the surfaces. Fit the baffle blade into the cylindrical baffle holder so that the blade is aligned in the vertical notches. Slide the magnetic stir bar through the blade and cylindrical holder. Confirm that the stir bar is centered in the assembled baffle. Turn the CDC reactor top upside down and place the assembled baffle onto the glass rod. Invert the reactor beaker and seat the beaker onto the top. While holding the beaker and lid, turn the reactor upright. Attach a bacterial air vent to a short length of size 18 silicone tubing and attach to reactor top. Attach a short piece of size 16 silicone tubing to the reactor top. This will serve as the inoculation port. Orient a glass flow break with the internal tube at the top. Attach a short piece of size 16 silicone tubing to the bottom. Attach a longer piece of size 16 silicone tubing to the top of the flow break and connect to a piece of size 16 norepine tubing, which will go through the pump head. Connect the norepine tubing to a final piece of size 16 silicone tubing of sufficient length to reach the media carboy. The effluent is gravity fed. Attach size 18 tubing of sufficient length from the effluent spout of the reactor to a waste carboy held in secondary containment on the floor. Install clean, unscratched coupons in the rods using the Allen wrench provided with the reactor. Ensure the coupons are flush with the surface of the rod that will face the baffle and tighten the set screws. Place the rods into the openings in the reactor top. The volume of each reactor varies slightly. Volume should be determined with a fully assembled reactor in operational mode. To do this, place the reactor on a magnetic stir plate and clamp the effluent tubing. With reactor assembled, coupons in place and rods aligned in notches, 
remove a rod and add water to the reactor until it is above the effluent spout. Replace the rod. Place the effluent tubing in a beaker. Set the stir plate to rotate at 125 RPM and remove clamp from the effluent tubing. Excess water will be displaced by rotation of the baffle. Pour the remaining water into a graduated cylinder to determine the reactor volume. The volume of this reactor is 340 milliliters. The pump flow rate is determined by dividing the reactor volume by a residence time of 30 minutes. For example, a reactor with a volume of 340 milliliters will need a flow rate of 11.3 milliliters per minute. Follow the pump manufacturer's instructions to set the flow rate. Use the same size and type of tubing that will be used in the experiment. Confirm the flow rate with a timer and adjust accordingly so that it is within plus or minus 0.2 milliliters per minute. Drill two holes in a 20 liter carboy lid. Install a 1 quarter inch barbed bulkhead fitting into each hole so that the nut is on the top of the lid. Add a short length of size 18 silicone tubing and a bacterial air vent to the top of one fitting. Add a length of size 16 silicone tubing to the bottom of the other fitting so that the tubing extends to the bottom of the carboy. Add the bulkhead cap to this fitting. Add reagent grade water to the carboy and sterilize appropriately. Drill two holes in a 20 liter carboy lid. Install a 1 quarter inch barbed bulkhead fitting into each hole so that the nut is on top of the lid. Add a short length of size 18 silicone tubing and a bacterial air vent to the top of one fitting. Add a short length of size 18 silicone tubing to the bottom of the other fitting so that the tubing extends a few inches into the top of the carboy. To maintain sterility after autoclaving, cover all open ends of tubing with aluminum foil and autoclave tape. Unseat the metal alignment peg on each rod from the lid notches. Place the reactor in an autoclave safe tray and autoclave on liquid cycle for 20 minutes, along with 300 mg per liter triptych soy broth, TSB, batch culture medium in a separate bottle. The CDC reactor and batch culture medium are ready for sterilization. After the reactor has cooled, clamp the effluent tubing to prevent the fluid from draining out of the reactor. Aseptically remove a rod from the reactor and place it in a sterile vial. Pour the batch culture medium triptych soy broth TSB, into the opening in the top of the reactor until the medium reaches the top of the effluent port. Return the removed rod to the reactor top and ensure that the pegs are aligned in the notches. Place the reactor on the stir plate and clamp the flow brake to the ring stand. The inoculum is 100 mg per liter TSB inoculated from a frozen stock culture and incubated for 22 plus or minus 2 hours at 36 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius, 125 RPM. Batch biofilm growth begins when 1 milliliter of the inoculum is added through the inoculation port. Turn the stir plate on and set to 125 RPM. Incubate the reactor in batch phase for 24 hours at 22 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. The cell density of the inoculum should be approximately 10 to the 8th colony forming units per milliliter and should be confirmed by serial dilutions and plating. Sterilize a 20 liter carboy of reagent grade water. Note the actual volume in the carboy after autoclaving. To prevent caramelization, a 
a nutrient medium concentrate of TSB is prepared separately. The final concentration required in the carboy is 100 milligrams per liter. Choose a volume in which to prepare the nutrient concentrate, in this case 0.5 liters. To calculate the amount of TSB needed, add 0.5 liter to the carboy volume. Multiply the volume by 100 milligrams per liter. Add the appropriate amount of TSB to a glass bottle, along with 0.5 liters reagent grade water, and sterilize appropriately. Aseptically, add the sterile continuous flow TSB concentrate to the carboy and swirl to mix. At the end of the batch phase, ensure that the effluent tubing is connected to a waste carboy and unclamped. Aseptically attach the continuous flow tubing to the continuous flow medium carboy. Turn the pump on to begin the continuous flow phase. Confirm that the continuous flow medium is being pumped into the reactor and that the waste is freely flowing through the effluent tubing into the waste carboy. It is important that no disinfectant, such as bleach, is added to the waste carboy during the experiment due to concerns of off-gassing. Continuous flow phase runs for 24 hours at 22 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. At the end of the continuous flow phase, the biofilm covered coupons are ready for efficacy testing or may be removed and studied for other research purposes. Here, the top rod contains biofilm covered coupons. For comparison purposes, the bottom rod contains clean coupons.